This is Pastor Brian from Eden Church. Church, but not as you know it. We want you to join in, subscribe, tell somebody about this new platform that we are on. Church, but not as you know it. It's completely different. We're going to have worship, the word, and we're going to just have a wonderful time in the presence of God. You want to join us uh, next time we're online. Stay tuned for what's coming up. Hey, it's that time, it's that place. It's Eden Church, but not as you know it. I'm Patrick and I'm excited to be here this morning. Guess what? I actually missed you. What have you been doing? What was your week like? I've had uh, a really full on week and I have to say that I'm looking forward to spending some time with you in the presence of God. I'm excited about what's gonna to happen today. We've got an amazing, and I mean amazing service today. Before I go um, any further, let me just say hi to everybody that's with us from around the world. Now, if I get it right, Nick, just remind me. So we've got the Caribbean, we've got Africa, we've got Europe, I think we've got Asia. Um, what, Sri Lanka? What are you saying, Sri Lanka? Shut it, shut it out, let me know. Ghana, Ghana in particular, Etese. Um, Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia, I don't speak Malay. Uh, Ni hao ma, I speak a little bit of Mandarin. Wherever you are, we're so glad that you're here. If you're from another country, um, shout out your country in the comments. You, sh you can find your flag and um, you know, just put your flag up when you give us the prayer symbol. It's so important that you, uh, you share what's happening uh, with us. Um, it means so much to us to, to read the comments and to see that you're watching along with us. So welcome, wherever you are, whatever country you're in, whatever room you're in, whatever device you're on, we're just so glad that you're with us. So before we go any further, I just wanna share a thought about um, something that happened last week. Each week we're doing uh, Bible studies with our boys, and this week we looked at Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna read it to you. I should really put my glasses on, but, um, I'm, I'm so vain. Um, and and it, it says this, for the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the heart and attitudes of the thoughts nothing in all creation is hidden from god's sight everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account and what's so powerful about that is the the word is powerful it was powerful then and it's powerful now back then in the in the new testament time they were looking back to the old testament now we're looking back to the new testament and the old testament but the fact is that it's as powerful now as it was back then, and it will be ever more. In the Message Bible, it says it's like a scalpel, like a doctor's scalpel, and that's really sharp. And my, my boys read that, and they were quite excited about that. So at this point, we're just going to pray that the, the still powerful, all-powerful Word of God will flow through us and um, bring everything uh, to, to, to light. So Lord, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for this moment. I thank you for every device, Android, Apple, iOS, every laptop, every MacBook Pro, every iPad, whatever we're watching on. I pray that you will connect to us with a supernatural power that will leave us better than when we came. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. Okay, so what have we got coming up? We've got uh, amazing praise and worship. We've got our, our prayer war. We've got a special song, which I'm not going to say too much about. And um, we've got something that we, ha we don't do enough of. Um, when I was growing up in, in church, we, we sang choruses, but we also had a thing called a hymnal which is a book that you would have a number and you would turn to the number and you would turn to the song and you would sing the hymns. Sometimes there were like 10 verses, but we didn't care. Um, 
uh, well, we did care when we were younger, but as we got older and we could understand the words, we, we really enjoyed it. So um, we have some hymnals and of course, uh, we have the word that's gonna be brought to us today with all power and, and, and might. And again, one of, the, one of my favorite things is the testimony. So we, we have a testimony today, which will um, be incredible. And I'll tell you more about it afterwards. I love praise and worship. I love the energy that the, uh, the worship leaders bring each week and the singers. And this week will be no different. We've got Zalika and Eden Praise, and they're gonna be singing Awesome God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship God this morning. We're going to give him all of our praise and our glory. So right now, what I want you to do is to just move your shoulders. I want you to stand up. I want you to move your waist, move your arms and dance like David danced because he is good to honor God with us singing. You know, God is an awesome God. He is great in everything and every trial that we may be sing that I could sing it but I'm not going to uh, thank you uh, to Eden Praise and Zalika now you might be wondering um, 
why did we only get one song? Don't worry, relax. There's more to come in the service. We're, we're just kind of having fun with the, with the format. We want to make sure that we keep it fresh, but we make sure that you still get all the great things that bless your soul each week. So don't worry, we've got more coming up. There's something so powerful about prayer, something so life-changing about it. Every time that we come to this part in the service, I sit in anticipation, and this week is no different. There's something very special about people getting together and praying about purpose. Today, we are continuing our prayers around how we use the gifts and talents that God gives us. As the ladies pray, I want you to join your own self in there and connect your own gifts and talents with their prayers so that God can reveal how you can express what he has given as your gift and your talent. So let's join in prayer for the prayer wall. Father God, I just um, this opportunity to come to thank you and for everything you for the gift and um, you've given us. I'm just um, lifting up my brothers and sisters and you in prayer today. And be bold. You I just be bold um, for those. ask Father you, God, Father that God, no that the, the gifts that you've um, Father God, that, um, that we will stand with, boldly. That and Heavenly Father God, God that um, bless us with these gifts they're able to Father use them God, for your glory use them for your, um, without any glory. fear. Uh, to, to increase your kingdom, Father God. That we thank you for every the gift that you've given us and we pray that you continue to reveal that, um, to us um, rise, our talents and the things that we didn't even know we were capable of. That, um, and to silence every God, voice of doubt that stops us believing in those gifts and believing in ourselves, and Father God. We, see, them from we know fear that you have placed anxiety. those gifts in us give them to them the use for your glory, to advance your kingdom. So let us use them boldly, Lord Jesus, with confidence because we know the confidence isn't in to, ourselves, to but in your you kingdom. using us as a vessel to work God, through us, that, um, uh, to draw people you to your show kingdom. them the gifts that they have. Father God, and I thank you show for them the gifts that they may be sitting on that they don't even know they even have. And I pray, Lord, all of those show gifts, them the gifts that have locked that, um, away. Uh, in place, uh, I come against the spirit of shyness and the Heavenly Father God, show them and give them the tools and the right people and let us stand strong and let us shine like a light, Father God, like a lighthouse, Father God, to be able to come closer to you so that actually able to hear your voice. Through us. Here you call in there. Father God, every gift, whether it's big or small, whatever it is, I ask let us not him, Father um, God, put it down as if it's not important. For placing the gifts within me, that we've been trying for showing me, years. Father God, Lord, let, what you want. Let a quickening of our spirit and, um, um, ignite those help gifts. Help me to be, um, be able to use them in, to, to um, um, your full doing glory, what you've asked Father me to do. God. We thank you for every gift and, um, you've placed in us. Help me to work for your kingdom. Those that are your people hiding, the gifts, those that I haven't told anyone about. And I just um, God, refer back to my brothers and sisters and in Christ, Christ that I thank you for um, they'll be obedient to you. That you've given and therefore your degree, decrees God. and um, thank you. regulations thank you for each and, every one of us and um, that we will see obey everything that uh, you're asking us to do. Even <sighs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's, there's, um, there's something so special about uh, when we open ourselves up and we make ourselves um, vulnerable before God. Um, thank you, Helen, and thank you, Marilyn. Now, um, we've got something very special now. Marilyn is going to share her testimony, and it's quite a testimony. It's, it's just gonna be a snippet of what's to come. When we move back into the church, she'll be sharing about her whole life story, and, and it's, 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 she's been through a lot. She's been through a lot, um, but, now she will share a small portion of, of that story. So listen, listen in and um, be ready to be blessed. Hello there. Hello. Lovely to see you today. <laughs> Thank you. And um, tell us a bit about yourself. I'm going to first of all ask you to introduce yourself and perhaps tell us just a little bit about yourself. Okay, hello. Hello. Um, my name's called Marilyn. I'm um, a mother of four boys. Four boys? Yes, wow. four boys. So the oldest is 27, and then I've got twins that are 25, and then the youngest is 18. Oh, you look young. You know, so. I thought, uh, so you had them when you were naught. <laughs> <laughs> Good, well done. Well, yes. I'll come. I'll come for, to you for some lessons, uh, you know, and how to bring up boys later. Uh, yeah. So carry on. And um, yeah, I'm a qualified um, counsellor, mm -hmm. and um, basically, um, 
And how did you come to, um, how long have you been a Christian and how did you come to become a Christian? I know that's probably a long question. Yes, but yes. yes. Um, I've um, been a Christian, I think, over 20 years now. And um, I, I came to Christ um, um, because um, I was having some suicidal thoughts oh. at the time um, when my kids were little. Oh, no. And um, the Lord led me um, up the high road one day and, and um, put one of his servants um, in front of me and asked me, this lady came and asked me, do I go to church and would I like to go to her church? And she gave me her number and I gave her mine and um, she rang me and um, invited me and my boys to church and I became a Christian um, three months later. Oh, that's amazing. So, yes. That's amazing. What great timing. God is always in yes. time, isn't yes, he? He's definitely. an on-time God. Definitely. And um, I understand that you've, um, he's been using your gifts. Yes. Um, so you said that you were feeling suicidal mm -hmm. at the time yes. and then the lady came along. Can I just ask you a really personal That's question and ask you what, what made you feel suicidal? Um, basically I'd suffered from depression at the time right. and um, it just started getting worse and worse. Um, especially after um, a period where I had my children and um, basically um, it just felt like I was just in a tunnel or a hole. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I just couldn't get out. and. Obviously, I didn't know the Lord at the time either, so that didn't help. And, um, and what type of people did you have around you? Did you have anyone sort of encouraging? Or um, I, I mean, I had my adopted mum at the time, mm -hmm. but um, I, um, I don't, I don't feel I was emotionally supported as right. much. Um, maybe it was, it, it was difficult, but she was very supportive when it came to my kids. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just, it's just knowing someone, to, having someone to talk to, mm -hmm. and someone to confide in, mm -hmm. and um, it, it just, just feelings of feeling very alone and mm. um, feeling, feeling like I was just existing, okay. you know. So how did church influence and change those feelings then? Um, it's like after I got, got baptised, I just, I just felt like a, you know, I, I still um, had depression, but, depression, but um, it, it, it was still bad, but it wasn't as bad, mm -hmm. you know. It was, it was still a journey because everything's a process, so it was still a journey. Mm -hmm. And um, I was still going through a lot of things. I started going counselling, mm -hmm. and um, um, I started, um, someone introduced me to a church, um, Eden Church, mm -hmm. and I started going on Wednesdays. Oh. And I found that um, um, Pastor Brian and, uh, and uh, another brother, Paul, mm -hmm. they were amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I started going quite frequently, and I was mm -hmm. very broken and very tearful. And all through, um, I used to go on and off for a few years, mm -hmm. and, and during that period, I just um, think you know I was getting prayed over and delivered mm -hmm. from certain things, and other people that um, have got the gift of prophecy were praying into my life, and um, I found that over a period of time things started breaking, mm, and um, if I'd, um, it's just through finding um, the pastor mm -hmm. and um, brother Paul. Just going so to I guess taking you under their wing, yeah. And of course, to, yes. Wednesday's the prayer and deliverance service, yes, and no definitely. better place to be when definitely you're in that not. condition. I'd recommend that to mm -hmm. anybody, but mm -hmm. that really, you know, I became a different person from mm -hmm. continuously going there. Oh. And um, you know, I'm just a different person. God has just worked on me throughout, and mm -hmm. depression's not there anymore. Praise God. Or the sadness or anything like that mm -hmm. now. So. And of course, his joy is your strength. Definitely, you're in, definitely, in you. Yes. <laughs> and yes. how long have you been coming to Eden now? Um, I've, I've really started going um, properly, on the Sundays. Properly, yeah, on the Sundays, mm -hmm. probably from last year. Uh -huh. But um, I'd come go on and off. Mm -hmm. You know, a little visit here and there. But it was mainly um, on the Wednesday. I mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. going more. I know you've got many gifts and, um, you know, counselling. Be able to listen is mm. a great gift. But also, um, you were telling me earlier that um, he's also placed some creative gifts in you. So he tell has. us a bit more about that. Oh, yes. Um, quite a, a, a range. Um, he has blessed me with, with um, um, a voice to sing. And um, I used to do praise and worship leading in my oh. old church. Um, also, um, I've written poetry. I've been writing poetry since I was a little girl. Mm. So I've continuously... Um, done that and um, also um, he led me to do a motivational speech which I haven't got out there yet and also in, in the um, process of um, doing a program for schools oh, wow. so I'm looking to get that out there mm -hmm. but also he's led me to write a book as well oh so, just recently just recently, oh yes. congratulations <laughs> and uh, how long did it take you to write the book or um, how, how, how did you actually write it um, it took me a few weeks actually a I few weeks yes a few some weeks. people it takes 10 years to write a I book. know it's just 
crazy. But um, one day it just placed in my spirit to write the book. Mm -hmm. So you can get this on Amazon mm -hmm. and um, you just type my name and, and just the, the title of the book mm -hmm. and um, everything will come up, mm -hmm. you know. Well, congratulations Thank for, you your, for your book. We're looking forward to uh, watching you uh, <laughs> and what the book is going to do for you. You know, once you've written a book, uh, you know, who knows? The world is your oyster. Yes, Get the pun, or the world is your oyster, <laughs> rare pearl. Anyway, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for talking to us here today. Of course, we're talking from, uh, to Marilyn, who is the author of the book Rare Pearl, and this is Eden Church. Thank you. Oh, Marilyn, Marilyn, Marilyn. You truly are a rare pearl in the desert. Where can we get that? Can we get the book on Amazon? I'm on, I'm, I'm on Amazon Prime. Can we get it on Amazon Prime? That was phenomenal. Um, and, and I'm talking about phenomenal. Now we have two of my most favorite songs of all time. And when I, when I heard these songs being rehearsed, it brought back so many memories of just when I first came to God. Um, so I'm not going to say too much about them. When you hear them, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so um, Yutunde and Eden Praise will lead us off first, and then Priscilla and Eden Praise will follow on, and we will enter a time of amazing praise and worship. As the deer pants for the waters, so does my heart thirst after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Those were the words of a psalmist, and even in this time, I pray and I hope that your heart is still longing after God and thirsting after God, and we want to see God move in the midst of us. Let's do the first verse together as the deer.
welcome again this Sunday. So happy that you have decided to join us. So wherever you are uh, engaging from, just want to welcome you. If you're listening in the Caribbean, in Africa, uh, Malaysia, just want to welcome you here with us around the Word of God. May God bless you. Uh, today, um, I, I've been looking at something uh, entitled, uh, What is in Your Mouth? And um, I've been trying to, to squeeze it into one sermon, but it's proven really difficult. So uh, what I've decided to do is, is, is take this sermon over two weeks. So we're going to have part one today, and then next week we carry on uh, with part two. Because I have so much to say uh, on this subject. Why don't I just pray before we continue? Lord, I thank you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare as your word goes forth today, it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish that to which you are sending it. I just pray, God, that every listener will be blessed, every ear will be opened, and every heart will be opened to receive what you are saying to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to take our reading. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, your iPad or your phone, I would like us to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 45 to 47. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. <laughs> this very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into my hands. Now you might be wondering, what has that got to do with my title? It's in your mouth. But here we see David, as he faces Goliath, they engaged in a war of words, even before a sword was drawn. And so we realize from the very offset of, of the scripture that I've just read how powerful words are. They began to, uh, to, to, to throw words at each other even before a, a, a sword was drawn, even before David picked up his stone. They began to war in the realm of the spirit. Hmm. Words have power. There is power in your mouth. Your tongue carries power. The things you speak, the things you proclaim, the things you profess, the things that are on your heart, the things that you write even, they have power. They are words. You have the potential to bring about change by the very words that you speak. You're able to do this because, I'm speaking to believers now, because you have an understanding of who you are in Christ. And you know the authority that you carry given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I, I believe that it is time for the church to stand up and begin to speak. Speak into the atmosphere. Speak against situations. I'm telling you something. You will be able to change Actually, can I say change this world by the things that you speak? If the church could only get up and realize who they are in Christ and begin to profess and begin to declare, you will see a difference. And I believe that we are able to do this according to the scriptures which tells us to be imitators of Christ. Follow Jesus. Do what he did and is still doing. Say what he said and is still saying. We are called to be imitators of Christ. Say it as if God is saying it. And you will begin to see the difference in your life. You know, for many years, I was crying out to God. Crying out to God, begging God for help. And, 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 and for a while, I, 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 I'm not seeing the, the results of my prayers. Not that it doesn't happen like that. Because the Bible tells us uh, when we cry out to God, He does hear us and He will do something about it. But, I, but I've come to say, saints today, that when you know the Word of God and you begin to profess the Word of God as if it is God who is saying it, you will begin to see the manifestation and the power of God at work. Ah, as if God is speaking it, you will definitely see a difference. I, I, I was in uh, Kenya, I went to Kenya to feed people, food, driving around like crazy, giving them food, when I realized the food that they need is one that is permanent, they needed the word of God, because it is that that brings about change. And, and so, uh, one day I met a family the woman, sick. Her back has been out of order for years. Her husband is blind. What good is food in that situation? What good is rice and milk in that situation? They needed the power of God in their lives. And the thing is, the power of God is on our tongues. And we just need to use it. I, I wasn't at the level that I am now. And I, was, I, I got the, all the people around me. We, we, we were there and we were crying out to God that God would heal this woman's back. Nothing happened. I was disappointed. I don't know if anyone has ever been disappointed when they have prayed for something and they haven't seen it happen. I'm sure you've been in that position. But God spoke to me just then and he says, Brian, what you need to do is just speak my words and you will begin to see the power of God at work. God said to me just then, at that moment, he says, the man who is blind, he's going to see. And more than that, God says, I'm going to save him. Immediately, God uh, brought back to my rem remembrance what I had read in the scriptures. How he had spat on the, uh, uh, in the mud, <laughs> uh, spat on the ground and made mud and placed it on the eyes of a blind man and then told him to go and wash in a pool. As crazy as that was, <laughs> that was Jesus speaking. And through obedience, as the man went and he washed, his eyes were opened. Faith had risen in my heart. I placed my hands on the blind man's eyes and I commanded his eyes to open in the name of Jesus. I don't have anything special. I don't carry any extra powers than you. But what I had was the words of God that I began reading from the age of nine that was deposited in my heart. And as I spoke those words, the man 
opened his eyes. He said to me, I can see that you are black. He began to describe what I was wearing and the bottle of oil that was in my hand. The whole place was up in praise to God. Now they can see that the word of God really does work. You add a little bit of faith in there and God performs it. We're thinking to ourselves now, nothing is impossible with God. And so now, all I did was just place my hands on the woman's back. I wasn't speaking in any great tongues. I just simply said, woman, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. I said, pain, I command you, in the name of Jesus, come out of her body. Because Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, took your pain, sister. Ah, the woman got up and immediately she was healed. Ah, saints, it wasn't about me, but it was about Jesus and the words that he has spoken and the promises that he has given us. The whole place was up in praise to God. Now they had faith probably more than I did. And they said to me that there is a crippled man down the road. How could I say I am not going? Or I can't go? Or I'm too fearful? Because it might not happen. But based on what I had seen God done, huh, they took me. We ran down the road to this man's house. We saw this man sitting in the corner of his room in the house. He'd been crippled for years. I went before him and I said, Brother, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to stand up. The man stood up. More than that, I said, Brother, in the name of Jesus, now lift your hands. And praise God. The man lifted his hands. He walked around <laughs> with his hands raised. And he was praising God. Just like the man that we read about in Acts chapter 3 at the gate beautiful. He began to praise, leaping and praising God. Saints, there is power in the word of God to bring about change. All we need to do is realize who we are in Christ and demonstrate, speak. Uh, because the word says, his word shall not return to him void. But it will accomplish that to which uh, he is sending it. Uh, even now, I am seeing what God is doing as his word is going forth. <laughs> Somebody is being healed in Jesus' name. God, I declare right now, because there is nothing that you cannot do, I speak your word, God, to every person who has faith right now, and I speak to the spirit of infirmity, and I command you to be healed in Jesus' name. You see, we read in the, in the book of 2 Peter chapter Chapter 1 and verse 3, it tells me this, that his divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. It's all yours in Christ Jesus. You see, my life changed when I switched from begging God to professing. When I switched from not knowing who I am in Christ to knowing who I am. And as I speak things, I'm expecting a result. When I, when I preach, I'm, I'm expecting at the end of my preaching that there will be a manifestation. As the word of God goes forth, there has to be a change. 
You will never know what you've got until you know what you have. And one of the ways that you find this out is by being an imitator of Christ. And so this morning, I want us to reposition ourselves so we understand the power that is in our mouths. When we read the book of Joshua, chapter 6, we know the story very well because Joshua conquered Jericho. They marched around the walls of Jericho and, and, they, and they shouted, they praised, they declared, and the walls came tumbling down. But Joshua here, in Joshua chapter 6, cursed the city with his words. It is well known, and for 1,000 years, that city of Jericho was cursed by the very words that Joshua had spoken. Everything has ceased in that city. There was no progress, nothing moved. The women who drank from the river became barren just because Joshua had cursed it. There is power in your, in your mouth, in your tongue, on your tongue. After, five, after 500 years, the man who tried to rebuild Jericho lost his son. We read this in 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 34. The land was bad. No reaping took place. No sowing took place. There is power in your mouth. Be aware of that to bring about change. This same Joshua, and this is where I got the idea from about uh, the weather. Because one day, uh, I wanted the weather to change. It was raining. Not that I've got anything against rain. I mean, I've got a beautiful garden. And uh, I, I love when it rains because it means that my grass and the flowers would be watered. But this one day, as, 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 I, as I was getting ready to do something outside, it was raining. I didn't want it to rain. It, it, it looked miserable. And I had read where Joshua had commanded the sun and the moon to be still. And so I had faith in God. I stepped outside. People must have thought that I was crazy. I stepped outside. I, I lifted up my hands and I commanded the rain to stop. And I commanded the sun to come out. I've got to tell you something. People might say that it's coincidence. But I would say it's God. The rain stopped. Huh. The sun came out. Saints, you are able to bring about change by the very words you speak. There is power on your tongue. Joshua chapter 10 verses 12 to 13. He commanded the sun and he commanded the, the, the moon to be still until further notice. This was the same Joshua who cursed Jericho. Words are very powerful. Proverbs 18.21 says this, that death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. The, the New Living uh, Translation uh, puts it a little bit uh, simpler for us to understand. It says that the tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So you've got to be careful what you're saying. You've got to be careful what you are speaking. There's no problem if you're speaking the word of, of God. There is no problem if you're speaking what Jesus says. But be careful what you say. There are some people that love to talk so much, they will get themselves in trouble. Be careful what you say. 
I implore you from henceforth to speak things that's going to bring about change. Speak positive things. Speak the word of God. If there is nothing else that you can speak, speak his word. Get his word in you and begin to speak it. You see, there are two ways that you can speak. You can either speak life or you can speak death. You can speak positive things or you can speak negative things. You can speak death or life over your children. You can speak death or life over your marriage. You can speak death or life over your family. You can even speak over the environment. When we look in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 8, we see Jesus faced with a storm. He's in, he's in the middle of the lake of Galilee and the storm uh, decided to come against him. The wind was fierce. The sea became boisterous. What did Jesus do? He stood up and he commanded, he spoke to the wind, he spoke to the waves, he commanded them to be still, be silent, be still, settle yourself, behave yourself. He commanded the wind and the waves and the Bible says immediately they became calm. Ah! Know who you are in Christ and begin to speak words of God. Begin to speak the word of God. It will bring about change. Change over your business. Change over yourself. Whatever you speak from the word of God will be the outcome. You see, what I want to do is to get us into a, a position where our speech, where our talk is changing going forward, where we're speaking different things. Matthew 12, 37 says that by thy word you are justified, by thy word you are condemned. The New Living Translation puts it like this, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. In other words, by what you say, you can be locked up or you can be released. You can be imprisoned or you can be set free by what you say. But actually, whatever you say it has got to be in your heart. It's going to come from somewhere. David says, thy word have I hidden in my heart so I will not sin against thee, Lord. At the age of nine, I received a, 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 a I told a story before, coming in this country, I received a, a big black King James Bible. It looked good. <laughs> and I read it. I didn't know what I was reading. But the words of God had been deposited in my heart and I didn't even know it. So years on, when the crisis came, when the challenges came, what came out of my mouth was the word of God to deal with those situations. Ah, don't speak what you know. Speak the word of God and you will see the very power of God being demonstrated right in front of your eyes. This woman wrote in the Bible that she gave me, Proverbs 3. She said, read that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, Brian, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Not my words, but the words of God. And for years, and I still do it now, I dwell on those words. And those words have brought me comfort. In times when I'm going astray, I turn to the word. And the word of God leads me and guides me. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Hallelujah. And it's interesting that the, the Bible here refers to or links the heart 
with the mouth. And by confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart, you're moved from the position of condemnation to acquittal. Let me say that again. By confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart, you have moved from the position of condemnation to acquittal. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not guilty. Why do I say this? Romans 8 and verse 1, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. This week only, I had a couple of calls from uh, a couple of people. Don't, they're not in Eden, they don't come to this church, but they've been uh, watching or joining us online. And they were saying to me, uh, Pastor Brian, you know, I, 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 we're feeling condemned by what has been said over us. That they've done some stuff wrong and they feel that they cannot come into the church because of what they have done. And I said to them, are you living in Christ at the moment? Are you following the, the commandments of God? And they say, yes, we are. And I said to them, well, my brother and my sister, the Bible says that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus has set you free from your sin, set you free from condemnation. You you are no longer condemned. You are free to go. I told them you have moved from the position of death to life. You have moved from hell to heaven, from darkness to light. You have moved from losing to winning. You are a winner. You are not condemned. You see, you have a responsibility to speak over yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to speak over you. Speak over yourself. Those times when you're feeling depressed and down, speak over yourself the Word of God because the Word of God will strengthen you. Those times when you are sick and you're waiting for a pastor or somebody else to come and lay hands over you and pray over you. Uh, don't wait, but speak the Word of God. Say to God, Lord, you have said this in your Word, so I am believing it. I'm going to tell you something. God will honor his word. His word, he says, is above his name. Hallelujah. I feel like I want to go on because I've got so much to say, but I'm going to stop right there until next week. We're going to take it from there. We're going to carry on. I've got some great things I want to share with you uh, next week. Why don't I just pray for you now? I just sense the power of God. Ooh, I just sense, sense His Holy Spirit right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. You said your word shall not return to you void, but it shall accomplish that to which you are sending it. Now in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God, I command every person that is infirmed to be healed right now. Saints, if you have a sickness, place your hands where that infirmity is, if you can reach it. In the name of Jesus, I command now, be healed, be healed, be healed. You said in your word, God, that by your stripes, we are healed, we are healed, we are healed. I speak to every mind now that is confused. And in the name of Jesus, your word says that our minds are renewed in Christ. I command every mind right now, those who are in Christ Jesus, to be renewed in Jesus' name. Lord, I declare, I declare this Sunday that miracles will happen in the homes of every believer, every person who is looking for a miracle. I declare it. Huh? Just like Joshua declared and command, I command in the name of Jesus that miracles will happen so that the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. May God bless you until next week. Yes, 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 yes. The word will not return back void. What Jesus did, 
we've been given power and authority to do in our own lives. So my question to you is, what are you going to do with it? Because I know what I need to do. I need to challenge the situations that I'm in, challenge the circumstances with the word, sharper than any two-edged sword. Remember that? So thank you, Pastor Brian. Now we're going to go into um, the, the time where you really can support the work of the church. It's a life calling for us. This isn't, this isn't something we do just at the weekends. This is church, but not as you know it. We're feeding uh, the poor. We're working in the community. So if you want to support the work of the church, uh, the details are on the screen. Uh, if you want to pay your offerings, the details on the screen. If you want to find out more about us, the details on the screen. We want you to feel part of what we're doing here. This does not work without you. We need everybody to come together and to support the work of the church. Um, so you, you might have noticed that our social media game has taken a step up. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on, we're on Facebook. So go to Twitter, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, and there you can find out what's going on. The, the social media team are working away, and it's a way to just keep in contact with us throughout the week. Now that you have all our socials, make sure you subscribe. It's a big red button, hit it, and then you'll be subscribed, and you can follow us and stay updated on everything that's happening at Eden. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the people that took part in our amazing service today, the praise and worship team, the camera crew, the testimonies, the sermons, the prayer wars, it just gets better and better. This is Eden, church, but not as you know it. <laughs>